This is it then, the one we've all been waiting for, the time Alp Duez X with 45 millimetres of tyre clearance. This is the gravel bike and I'm going to tell you what I think of it. Just look at all that tyre clearance, 45 millimetres baby, as we cruise along this valley at whatever cruising speed these tyres will allow. Let's sort of remind ourselves of the build we put together on this. We have robbed the wheels from the Ridley build. Uh, that is the WTB carbon rims, super stiff, super light rims that we custom made onto a set of DT Swiss 350s, I think it was. Um, and we have wrapped them up. Ooh, downhill. We have wrapped them up in a set of Vittoria Mezcals. Now, these are from the mountain bike sort of range, but they do a gravel range. And they're actually a 700 by 44, but they measure a legitimate 45 in the bike. The rest of the build is all a mixture of SRAM access stuff. I know that Shimano have just launched the new GRX range, but we haven't got that in time for this test. So we went straight to our favorite gravel group set, which is the SRAM access range, just because there is so much choice. Uh, so we've got a 10 through to 44 cassette on there. We've got a 42 tooth chain ring, some carbon cranks. Uh, you get the idea, disc brakes, blah, blah, blah. So pretty standard, but nice gravel build. So expect them to be quite nice and lightweight because this is what this frame's about. It's performance gravel. We're going to take this race in. We want to go and put some speed in it and get some distance in. This isn't necessarily the weird gray area between mountain biking. This is more a road biker taking their bike off road. Yeah, this is going to be one of those gravel bikes that starts with a bit of walking. Because, <laughs> you know, why not? Got to see what this thing can do. The good news is, is that the frame is lovely and light. It's like 1.2 kilos, I think, when we weighed it. It's like 200 grams heavier than a road bike, considering all the excess material for reinforcing and making room for those wider tyres and longer wheelbase. I think it's pretty damn good. Kind of reminds me of old school mountain biking. Back to my old adventure racing days. 26 inch mountain bikes, hardtails, 80 mil suspension. But more importantly, those continental cross country tyres pumped up to like 60 PSI or something ridiculous, 1.75 inches. Back then adventure racing was very rarely on technical ground, it's nearly all gravel, forest trails, that sort of thing. So it's <laughs> bringing back some memories. Right, let's get on and ride. I mean, the first thing you notice when you take it off road is the stiffness in the frame and you expect it to just be mind numbingly uncomfortable, but it's not, it's kind of okay. And every pedal stroke, there's forward momentum. Every steering input goes exactly where you want it to go. Even on these boulders, push through, hold a line, come on. Last time we were here, we came down this descent with the normal 38 millimeter clearance ADHX and everyone criticized me for taking a gravel bike on a mountain bike trail. But um, anyway, this time we're doing it all the way around. So I have to walk up this, but this is where we are. This is a public byway. Now, if you're not in the UK, a public byway with a red arrow means it's okay for motor vehicles. So I think this is legitimate gravel, but if you want to know, how steep that was when we came down here on the ADHX. Well, <laughs> take a look at this. We are going uh, up there. That's, that's the top of the climb. I can tell you that it shoulders very nicely. Lovely smooth area around where you put it on your shoulder. It was very comfortable. <laughs> but I think we should talk about why we go up here the amazing paint jobs. They've taken those 
chroma colours from the sporty ADH, that chroma blue, the chroma red and that electric green and they've done this fantastic fade into clear coat lacquer over the carbon. Looks absolutely stunning, it's a real, real head turner. I've gone for the electric blue, I just fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. Even though the green are like map deck colours and looks really exciting, this blue just looked like ice and I loved it. The red literally looks like fire, sort of fades into orange. I love it. In fact, you won't get wrong with either of the three colours. And what I do love about your frame only options that Time do is that unlike other brands, when your colour choice is restricted to your budget, your choice of component tree, with Time you can just pick your favourite frame, your favourite colour, even get a bare one and get it custom painted. More on that later. Build quite literally your dream bike and whatever budget you have. That's got to be good. It's got to be the way forward. We've got this little bag on the top tube and that is, well that's for the drone. It's just big enough to put a drone, battery, got the controller in the back pocket. So quite a handy little setup really. There aren't really an awful lot of mounts for things. You get your normal four bottle cage and your two sort of top tube. Never quite sure what they're for. I've never really found a bag that actually fits on these two bolts at the top, but I'm sure they exist. Got a little saddle bag back here. That's for all like essential tools and stuff. And in my back pocket, got some food and phone and that sort of stuff. So this is, this is really is about performance gravel with those short, sharp, exciting rides. It's not really the endurance gravel bike packing bike. I think that's coming in a different model. Well, I'm speculating. I'll talk about that later in the video too. Now, one thing I am noticing is that this bike is a bit too small for me. I ride a legitimate size large and this is a medium. So I have a 350 millimeter seat post all the way to the limit line. And to be fair, it could probably just go up another couple of millimeters. It's rideable, but I definitely need a size large. It doesn't belong to you. <laughs> Rocky bit. Let's just go straight over the middle. Yeah, fine, cool. I mean, you've got to pick a line. It's not just mountain biking. Hey, hey. Ah, oh, gravel. There you go. That's gravel. So, can confirm, this is a very competent off-roader. I was just hitting those boulders, jumping off the little lips, having an absolute blast. There is, there is such a confidence-inspiring ride. I mean, it's not mountain biking. I mean, you have to pick a line and be a bit careful, but it'll go where you bloody well put it, and that's, that's all you want. If you see a boulder and you either want to hit it or not hit it, and you want to steer it, those forks are stiff, those wheels are stiff, those tires are grippy, it will do what you tell it to do. There is definitely no wallowy, saggy handling, which just destroys confidence. Um, and it's not like a bone shattering ride either. It's performance gravel, don't get me wrong. It's, um, I mean, it's not designed for that, but it'll do it quite well, actually. Oh, I've got poo on my hands. Let's uh, spin you around so you can see what I'm looking at. There you go, here's our, here's our trail. So it's quite loose gravel, which is making traction difficult. And then the occasional boulder 
it sort of just throws off your rhythm and you have to change line and just think about making the front wheel light just to pull it over but keep that traction quite enjoying the challenge now actually <laughs> to agree this is an absolutely stunning looking bike it kind of looks even better now it's covered in a bit of dirt and poo but this electric blue i'm just absolutely loving it it rides exactly how i expect a time bike to ride super super stiff like every single pedal movement steering input just happens it's just so responsive and stiff but then you're just always just blown away i keep saying it be just blown away by it not being a bone shattering teeth rattling like ride it's just perfectly smooth and compliant i think that has got something to do with the dyneema it has to be i can't imagine how they've done it otherwise it feels plenty robust enough at no point over anything does that feel fragile or not up to the job it is just sturdy confidence inspiring ride i think it's probably a little bit on the short side and a little bit on the steep side for what we've just thrown at it but it was never intended for that. This is a proper flattish ground, proper gravel bike, racy. That's that's the vibe, you know. What we've done is, again, taking this bike outside of its comfort zone. But I think that's what you've got to do when you're testing bikes. You've got to show them where the limits is. And if you hit that sort of stuff, then it's going to be fine. You're not going to feel like you have to get off or you're about to break something. This is just, it's just got your back. I, um, Again, time, you've just hit the nail on the head and this time you've got your marketing right. No rubbish about, it. you know, what is it? This is absolutely a gravel bike. But that does raise the question, what are time doing with their range? How does it all fit together? What is still to come? To that, I think we need to get back to the workshop and do some thinking. Oh, here's a useful thing. So I've just discovered these. These are, oh, sunshine, these are, Everett Carbo Jellies. Now they're a bit like a gel, but they're solid, which means that when you take the wrapper off, you don't like squirt it in your eye and it doesn't run down your cheek. Hmm. I kind of wish I had said it better than that. Anyway, look. Now it's solid, look. You can squish it and it's not going anywhere. You can put the litter in your pocket. And then when you give this a squish, it kind of comes out as a semi, semi-solid oh, and it's kind of a gel texture which means that you can kind of have it like a gel but without the whole inconvenience especially if you're off-road how many of you just done that and it just squirted everywhere look dreams it's not the nicest tasting thing i've ever had but it's not revolting it's definitely a, a sports product and here's the best bit, when you put it in your pocket, you're not going to get a sticky, gooey pocket because you can roll this up. Oh, oh no, it ran out of gears. <laughs> There's no temptation whatsoever to throw it in the hedge. Good thinking. I think it's time for an ice cream. Hello, how are you doing? Um, can I get a toasted honey ice cream, please? I'm going to enjoy this. Okay, so I've had a few rides on this now and my thoughts are pretty clear on how I think this rides. But um, I just want to sort of show you, this is the, the bright red colour. So we were really, really lucky actually. When these arrived in the UK, the, the time wreck came up with all three colours, the red, the green and the blue. And he said, Paul, which one do you want to build up and do a ride review on? And it was a really tough decision because all of the colours were absolutely stunning. But I chose the blue. I just sort of fell in love with that really blue, icy look. Although that came a very close second. 
the green, don't get me wrong, was lovely, but he had to take that away and show it to another dealer. So we have this to show you, which I just think is stunning. Let's talk about this bike as it is. Now, this is a size medium. It's a little bit too small for me. That's why we've got so much seat post out. So I found it a little bit on the short side, but it was still so competent off-road. You'll see me riding some really quite rough terrain and it just, it never feels like it's going to break underneath you. It just feels absolutely solid. It feels like you're riding steel. And I could say that about the entire time range. It always feels like you're riding a steel bike, but like half the weight of a steel bike. That's the sort of ride feel you get from them. But really the big story is that this is the bike that we were expecting the ADHX to be. So it begs the question, how is the time range coming together under its new ownership? Well, if we just pan out a little bit, we've got the entire time range here now, and now it starts to make a whole lot more sense. You see, we've got the classic, this is the ADH, the Alp Duez, the 23, this is, without doubt, the race bike. Bold colours, logos, skinny tyres, absolutely all out. Take this to any sort of road race and you'll be uh, having a fantastic time. Really agile, nimble handling, really reactive, gonna love it. But the ADHX, which Time thought was a gravel bike, but in that video I said, no, it's not. This is how the ADHX should look, in my opinion. This is a road bike, slightly longer wheelbase, slightly taller, and it makes for an absolutely fantastic sort of non-racing version of the Alp Duez. So we've got some more tire clearance in there, that longer wheelbase, and a slightly toned down, more sophisticated paint scheme. And this is how we set this up with a 105 group set where you get the, the lower ratio gears, the, the wheels can still be deep section, but not the massive emphasis on aerodynamics and lightweight. It's just a good, solid road bike. So of course, there are two big names missing from the time range. That is the Fluidity and the Skylon. So where are they gonna fit? In my opinion, the Fluidity fits in this gap here. The Fluidity should be their endurance bike. And for me, endurance, as you know, is all about efficient, mile munching fun. And that means that you've got to have slightly steeper seat angle so that you can bring your body slightly further forward. Uh, it needs a slightly shorter reach and of course a slacker head angle because this is all about straight line, momentum, rough roads, tired bodies, that sort of thing. And that's where I think the fluidity is going to be. So I expect that to see a 74, 71, 70-ish 70 head angle and a probably tire clearance for probably 40 millimeter tires. So you've got some space for some fenders. I also expect to see it having fender mounts and possibly even some slightly different cable routing. So those endurance miles where maintenance is a bit more frequent, it's maybe slightly easier. Who knows, that might come onto their gravel bike. More on that in a second. At the other side, we go right down to the racing side and we're going for an even faster, racier version of the Alpe d'Huez into like more stage racing. And that's where the Skyline should sit, like right here. We've been waiting for the Skyline for ages and the Skyline should be a really low stack height, really aerodynamic, but also loads of integration. We're expecting to see some, hopefully some really funky handlebar stem designs that really just integrate everything, clean everything up, and hopefully it's some really bold, striking paint schemes that are really gonna make you just go, wow, that's what the Skylon should hopefully be. That, that has now got to compete with the Look 795 Blade RS. That is the benchmark, and the Skylon has to take the time design signature into that sort of a bike. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with. But if time are gonna continue along this path of gravel bikes, like it looks like they are, what is the next bike going to look like? Now for me, the next bike in their range has to be the Fluidity, possibly a Fluidity 50, which means that you take that slack head angle geometry and then you add even wider tires, loads of bottle cage mounts, and then some way of externally routing some of the cables so that when you're taking it off road, through mud, through grit, then you've got an easier way of servicing headset bearings and cables and that sort of thing. It probably also needs routing for mechanical group sets as well. So that would give time this fantastic range of four road bikes, right the way from aero, through race, through road, through endurance, and then two fantastic gravel bikes, performance gravel and adventure gravel. And that 
would be a comprehensive time range for me. What do you think? What are you excited for? What's missing from their range? What would you like those two new models to look like? Get down in the comments. I assure you that the guys from Time are definitely watching these videos and they're listening very carefully to your comments as well. So please get down there. If you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. I knew